سال تفضلوا استريح جدولينج وارجونا ستادي ديورينج ذا سانت ميري ريفايفل ذا 12 ماينر بروفيتس اند وي ار جونا فوكس اون جيسوس ان ذيس بوك Um, every day, Gadolin. Uh, we're going to start today with uh, Michael Gary. Uh, he's going to give us one of the 12 book uh, today. هندرس مع بعض بنعمة ربنا لأنبياء الصغار في الكتاب المقدس في العهد قديم هم 12. هنبتدي ندرسهم كل يوم صفر بنعمة ربنا. احنا هنركز على المسيح في السفر دوت والحاجات اللي نقدر نستفيد بيها تطبيقات عمليه برضك الخطوط الاساسيه السفر اتكتب انت وكده هيبقى مركز قوي خلال تلت ساعه نص ساعه بس. افتر وي فينيش ذا ذا توكو ار جونا بريز لايك تسبحه نوت اول هولز تسبحه بات لايك ميني تسبحه بيكوز وي ونا انكرج اور كيدز اند يو تو اتند وذ اس. You know, we are going to finish all things at nine. At nine. But on Saturday, we are going to praise whole Tazbiha Gadwal. Okay? يعني بعد ما نخلص هنقول حاجة في التزبحة بسيطة. عايزين نشجعك ونشجع العيال إن هم ما يحضروا. مش لازم نقول التزبحة كلها خلال الأيام عشان العيال ممكن تزهق وتتعب وكده. لكن إحنا عايزين نعودهم على التزبحة. فكل يوم ناخد كده إيه؟ يعني عارفين اللي بيقول بندوق حاجة ندوق كده حاجة ويوم السبت بس نقول كل التسبيحة طبعا زي ما متعودين نصليها يوم السبت اتفضل يا مجد اسم الاب والابن والروح القدس اله واحد امين كل سنة وانتم طيبين النهارده هنتكلم عن سفر هوشع we'll talk about the book of Hosea I will be switching between Arabic and English to accommodate everyone Okay, so before we start, let's give a very brief overview كده, on who are the prophets and what, what they do and their function and the difference between the canonical prophets and the non-canonical prophets اللي هم ال prophets اللي كتبوا كتب أو ال prophets اللي كانوا موجودين uh, من غير ما يكتبوا uh, كتب. دي خريطة كده uh, quick كده من بعد الانقسام بتاع المملكتين after the division of the two kingdoms, the north and the south. The north is on the, on the top. The yellow one and the south is the green one. You know that the north kingdom dissolved by the Assyrian captivity. بعد السبي الأشوري, this kingdom dissolved, right? It no, it no longer existed. However, the kingdom of Judah existed way after that until the captivity by Babylon and then the destruction of the temple and then it continued. And then the restoration and coming back to Jerusalem. However, the northern kingdom, when it dissolved, it just it disappeared. Okay? All right, so Hosea, so there are, there are two groups of prophets. There are the canonical prophets, those who left us books, such as Hosea, Amos, Shaya, Armea, Haskiel, Daniel, Dul bin Sammihum, Al Anbiya, Al Kataba, Al Katabunna Haga, Sabunna Kitab. However, there are a group, another group of Prophets who did not leave us writing, such as they Elisha, we Elia, وهكذا. فلو بصينا كده ال 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 المجموعة ديان اللي هي double stranded by by in blue. Those are the non-canonical prophets. And then the canonical prophets. There are some prophets who preached to the north and some who preached to the south. Of them, Hosea mainly focused on the north. His message was mostly to the north. However, his message also applies to what happened to the south. نهاردا هنركز على الحقبة ديان أو الوقت دوان اللي هو الوقت بتاع نبوة هوشع. The time for Hosea's preaching and service. And extended for a, such a long period for multiple kings, whether in the northern kingdom or at the southern kingdom. So he started with the late days of Jeroboam II, who was um, a very strong king. He established a very prosperous uh, 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 lifestyle for people. However, things declined really, really very fast at the end of his service, and it ended slightly before 
ذا اشيريان كابتيفيتي سو هي ستارتد من جربان الثاني وابتدى يخدم لغايه لما المملكه ابتدت ان هي تنهار تماما وهو كان شاهد على انهيار المملكه لغايه لما وصلوا للسبي طيب دي كده زوم ان على الفتره دي يبقى هو ستارتد هيز سيرفيس اراوند 753 بي سي اول ذا واي تو اراوند 7 23 or 724 before Christ, the captivity happened in 721-722. So he did not attend the captivity itself لأن هو ما كتبش عنها ما كتبش عن السبي في الكتاب بتاعه فبالتالي معظم السكولرز بيقول إن هو ما حضرش السبي نفسه ولكنه أشار لي. وده يخليه إن هو كان معاصر لأشعية. أشعية في نفس الوقت كان الرسالة بتاعته أو الخدمة بتاعته في الساوث. يبقى هو كان معاصر لأشعية هو تناول السبي من المنظور الشمالي واللي حصل فيه وأشعية برضو في نفس الوقت اتكلم عن الحرب اللي كانت قائمة في الوقت دون the war the Syro Ephraimite war that was taking place during that time which eventually led to the captivity of the northern kingdom يبقى he started his ministry near the end of the reign of Jeroboam the second between somewhere in the late 50s, 759, 753, around that time. And it started with a very prosperous kingdom, and then things declined. And eventually it led to the fall of Israel around the year 70, uh, 722. Right. After the death of Jeroboam, if we go back to the timeline, his son, Zechariah, was killed. And let's focus on those names, not to remember them, but... Uh, he will um, mention things about, you know, how this dynasty fell apart and how this dynasty just came to, uh, to, to perish, basically. And he was contemporary of Isaiah in the south, as I mentioned. However, he doesn't mention the fall of Israel, and that's why we said that his service ended uh, a bit before the, uh, uh, the fall of Israel. Uh, the main historical event that took place during that time is what is called the Syro or Syrio of Ephraimite War. The kingdom of Syria, not Assyria. Assyria is the kingdom of Ashur, but it was the kingdom of Syria. And the Ephraimites, which are the kingdom of Israel, they have a name. So it was the kingdom of them to bring the kingdom of Ashur that was from the south. But in the end, هم حاولوا يستميلوا مملكة الجنوب معهم. They tried to ally with them also the southern kingdom. However, they did not succeed. And Ahaz, uh, back then, he decided not to be an ally with them. And they ended up falling to the Assyrian captivity and they lost the war. So it is the same war that Isaiah mentions in his book. Again, this period اللي هو ابتدى فيها كانت في رخاء في الدولة ولكن الحياة العامة الاقتصادية والسياسية والحربية ابتدت تنهار لغاية لما أدى إلى انهيار المملكة. أوكي طيب كتير قوي بيبقى عندنا مسكونسبشن وخصوصا في كتب الأنبياء إذا كان أشعية أرمية الكتب الكبيرة أو الأنبياء الصغار إن الحاجات what they report comes in a chronological order back to back. However this is not always true because it's uh, it is done in a way that's called anthology. Basically, it is a collection of prophecies or incidents that were put together because when God talked to his prophets, it did not happen continuously over time. So for example, his service, he had three main uh, uh, prophecies that took place throughout his whatever number of years of service. That was like about 753, about 30 years of service to 722, 30 years of service, what he mentions in his book is not a chronological incidents or events that happened during his lifetime. So for example, his first prophecy, it happened, it was about the fall of the dynasty of Jehu, Jehu, who is the grandfather of Jeroboam II, and then that was around 753. So that was fulfilled around 752 or something like around that time. And then his second prophecy, which is in chapter 5, was talking about King Menahem. So if you look at the timeline here, it was different. So he prophesied, he sent a message, and then wait, and then God talked to him, and then he sent another message. And then later on in chapter 7, it was about a couple of decades later where he talked about 
you know, the, the, the double dealing with Assyria and Egypt and the eventual fall of the kingdom of the north. In the structure of the Kitab, what it covers, there are three main things. First, three chapters, they talk about his marriage to Gomer. Qasid Gawazu to Gomer, al Mar'a al Zaniya. The Juz al Tani of the Kitab, he talks about Israel's indictment. And the Juz al Talit, he talks about the fall and the restoration. Now, in the pattern, it's always the case with all the prophets. There is always a sin, they commit a sin, then judgment happens. And then there is a promise and restoration. This is a typical pattern for all the prophecies, for all the books in the Old Testament. Restoration, which is basically the story of humankind, right? This is what happened with us. There was a sin, there was a judgment, and then we were restored by his resurrection. So what is the key message? Key message is that God's love for Israel, in spite of her unfaithfulness, <coughs> will, persi <coughs> me. will persist and ensue eventually in restoration. Again, there is love, and this is the story that we will go over, which is his marriage to Gomer, who was a harlot or a, 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 a prostitute. And then, despite of her faithfulness, he restored her because of his love to her which is, again, this story of humankind. Because of our unfaithfulness, however, because of God's love, he restored us. So what is the relation between getting married to a prostitute has to do with us falling in sin? We'll see that later. So there are four main highlights in the book that I want to go over. First thing, which is the very, you know, the, the theme of the book, which is about the, his, his infamous marriage to Gomer. Mean Gomer. Gomer was either a prostitute that God asked him to go and marry her, or she is one who was basically uh, practicing idolatry at that time. And by nature, Abadat al Awthan fil Dawan, it involves alaqat ghir, alaqat bishakl prostitution, or bishakl al. As part of the practice, as part of the service, they, they, they do that. Or it was referred to as a spiritual state. However, most of the scholars and the conservative scholars, they lean towards that she was a prostitute indeed. And he restored her. He got married to her and he saved, restored her from the life that she was living. And then they had three children. The three children, each of them has a message. Usually in the Old Testament and even the Old Testament, the meaning of names always carry something, always carries a meaning. The first of them is Jezreel, which means God sows. Rab Yahsut. The first prophecy that he prophesied was about the fall of the dynasty of Jehu, who is the grandfather of Jeroboam II. And remember, Jehu was very bloody like basically when God asked him to uh, clean the house he went far and beyond what God asked him and he started killing pretty much everyone that was involved in that and that happened and took place in the valley of Jezreel however his first son was named Jezreel or God souls, Rabbi Yahsan. As if God wanted to tell him the same way, in the same place, your dynasty started. Again, it's my commandment. This is the place where your dynasty will fall. And that happened literally six or seven months after the death of Jeroboam II by the death of his son, Zechariah. And it happened in the same location, basically, uh, where they lost to the Assyrians. So, as you can tell, this is, this is the valley of Jezreel. It is a prosperous place. It should be a sign of comfort, a sign of prosperity, it's a sign of growth, development. However, it was a site of blood because of what Jehu did uh, early on in the history. The second son, uh, sorry, the second child, 
was a daughter, and her name was called Lo Ruhama. Lo means no. Ruhama means compassion or rahma, زي ما احنا عارفين بالعربي. But no compassion. Because of what you did, there will be no compassion or mercy. The third was called Lo Ami or Lo Ami. No Ami or not my people. And here he remembers back all the Exodus thing. Like, when if take it for Sifr al Khuruj, it was always the people of Israel were called what? You are my people. And Tum Shabi, Shabi, Shabi. Yigi Hena, you alone, not my people. You are not my people anymore. Because the expectation back then when they went out of the land of Egypt that they are his people and they are gonna follow him. However, because of their sin and their deviation, and following the idols, they did not, they are not any longer uh, his people. That can be the theme of the the infamous marriage of Gomer. We talked about the Gomer and how it was a promise to the person who is away from God. When you read about God, the theme of the Sifr is that the relationship with God هي علاقة زوج بزوجته فيها trust فيها faithfulness فيها love when the wife goes away and starts worshiping idols that is very similar to her going away and being unfaithful to her to her husband and basically falling into uh, uh, adultery and we always see this pattern of, or this parallelism between idolatry and adultery. They always go hand in hand. عبادة أوثان مماثلة للابتعاد الزوجة عن زوجها في علاقات أثم. The second theme is that God promises the restoration of the marriage even before he finalizes the judgment. Even before he tells her that there is a judgment, he still, because of his compassion and because of his kindness and uh, his loving heart, he gives her a promise that she will be restored. So he, in this section, he always gets back to this part of Exodus. You know, I did, I did, I did with you this, 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 this and that. However, you remained unfaithful to me. He's still reminding them of the old gold days. Like, like any dispute that happens between a wife and a, and a husband. You know, at the moment, you know, you start reminding yourself of the old gold days. Like, why did you do that? We were good. We loved each other. You were faithful to me. You were, you were, you were. And all of a sudden, you changed. You went away. So God here in this part, he is out of his love and out of his kindness. He is reaching out to his people and telling them, remember the old gold days. Remember when we were together. Remember how much I loved you. Remember how, what did I do for you? So there is an emphasis on the early patriarchs and the early Israelite theme. Um, in order to show his compassion to his people. يعني هنا مثلا في الإصحاح الثاني he will therefore behold I will allure her will bring her into the wilderness and speak comfort to her. He's reminding her of you know why? Why did you do that? He is بيناقوا بعض يعني بيلومها ليه عملتي كده؟ ليه ليه يا شعبي بعد ما أنا عملت معاكم كل الكلام دون ليه تبعدوا عني؟ after they came back from the land of Egypt here. يرجع تاني ويقول لها أو يقول للشعب that you will call me husband and no longer call me master for I will take from her mouth the names of the Baal. Baal هو اسم الإله اللي هو رمز لعبادة الأوثان اللي هم جابوه من أرض كنعان. في العربي بعل يعني بعل. ما حد تقول على حد بعلي زي زوجي. هي 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 في في تشابه هم راحوا واخدوا جوز تاني خالص هم سابوا ربنا وراحوا خدوا بعل تاني خالص اللي هو الاله فهنا هنلاقي ان دايما في العهد القديم بيبقى في بلاينج وذ ووردز يعني ف 
في الترجمه العبريه هزبند وماستر وبعل الثلاثه كلمه واحده فلو قريناها ان هو that you will call me بعل my بعل call me your husband i am your husband and no longer call me my master and it has three, three different meanings as a master as a lord or as a husband intimate or as بعل which is the name of that idol uh, uh, in that area back then at that time So he's telling them, don't call me Baal as the idol, but call me your husband. Don't call me my, your master. Call me your husband because our relationship is much more intimate and much more deeper than just a relation between a master and his slave or whatever. I will betroth you to me forever. And again, he tells her, I promise you, I will betroth you. We will start over. Betrothal basically is like they are starting over okay forget about all what happened after the judgment and the restoration I will betroth you to me forever and this is going to be forever yes I will betroth you to me in righteousness and justice in loving kindness and mercy but we will have different foundation here our foundation will be based on loving kindness and mercy this is the second highlight. The third highlight is he talks about Israel's long history of falling. At the end, Israel had a long history of falling. The people of Israel were in the south, because they were far away from the Hekel, so they were far away from our God. So they had a long history of falling from the south. The kingdom of Israel was in the north. They were away from the temple, and therefore they were much, much far away from God as their counterparts in the south. And then he talks about this theme. You know, we, we all know this verse. My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. What kind of knowledge he is talking about here? Is it the intellectual knowledge? Do you don't know about, you know about me and what I did and you know, the historical part of it? What kind of knowledge he is talking about here? Ritual. Even deeper, I would say. We have been talking about this theme of marriage throughout, right? What does it mean that a man knows his wife or a woman knows her husband? Being faithful. You know me as a wife that knows her husband. It's a very intimate relationship. You are destroyed because you are away of me. You are no longer with me. You don't know me in the sense of a married couple not in an intellectual sense. Because you have rejected knowledge. When you think about, yeah, that makes sense. Now, rejected knowledge, you rejected being close to me. You rejected my relationship to you. Again, however, because of this, you know, you, you are far from me. Here there is a covenantal relation, uh, uh, relationship. He will give them a covenant, ahd. After two days, he will revive us. On the third day, he will raise us up that we may live in his sight. Let us pursue the knowledge of the Lord. What, 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 what is this talking about? What happened like first, second, and then on the third day? What prophecy is this about? Resurrection. Through resurrection, we restored our intimate knowledge of God. That was his point here. The same way I will restore you, as I mentioned in the previous slide, I will betroth you from the beginning. It is the same way that God will restore us to his knowledge through resurrection. And this is a direct prophecy about the resurrection of Jesus on the third day. When Israel was a child, I loved him. And out of Egypt, I called my son. In Ayah al-Mashura, min Masr, da'at ibni. Taban, can fi short-term fulfillment, fi min nubuat kitir, bi baliya short-term fulfillment to long-term fulfillment. Haga hasalat fil waqtu al-urayib, wa haga hasalat fil al-madat tawil. Taban, nubuwa dayanat haqaqat fil madat tawil, lamma al-Masih rah ard Masr, wa riga min ard Masr. Lakin hena kan azdu ee. Yulom, from Egypt, I called my son. الحد اللي أنا طلعته من مصر دون my son أنتوا ولادي ولكن اللي أنتوا فيه دلوقتي أنتوا مش ولادي 
وكما لو كان ان النبوه ان المسيح باللي هيعمله ليتر اون هو الانتي تايب بتاع التايب بتاعهم هو الجود موديل بتاع الباد موديل هم جم من مصر ولكنهم ما استمروش ولكن السيد المسيح جه من مصر وحقق الجود فولفيلمنت بتاع الباد اكزامبل اللي هم عملوه في الاولد تستمنت طيب رابع حاجه احنا اتكلمنا عن ثلاث حاجات الزواج الجمر تاني حاجه كانت عن مين فاكر بروميس ايفن بيفور ذا جادجمنت تاريخهم الطويل من السقوط واخر حاجه السقوط نفسه والريستوريشن سو ذا جادجمنت هابند ذات ذا كينجدوم اوف اسرائيل ويل بي كابتشرد كابتيفيتد under captivity and it will dissolve forever however repentance will bring blessing and god's love wins the same way this pattern sin judgment restoration sin judgment restoration this will be a common pattern that we will see in all the books that we will study throughout the nahda and even for those that we are not going to study for the for the great prophets al anbiya al kubar major prophets Here he talks about, I will love them freely. This is the promise. This is the restoration. Our love will be restored and I will love you for free. It's not going to be in return of anything you may think of. For my anger has turned away from him. After repentance, I will basically forget everything that you did and we will start a new start. Type. لو قرينا الكتاب بتاع هوشا في حبة سمات مميزة كده لطريقة الكتابة بتاعته. هو فيري فيري فيجراتيف. بيستخدم أمثلة كتير خالص خالص وتشبيهات كتيرة جدا. يعني لما بيتكلم عن ربنا بيتكلم عنه إن هو جيلس هاسبند. هو دايما بيتكلم عن الثيم بتاع الوايف أند هاسبند وقد إيه إن ربنا هي إز جيلس هاسبند أون هيز وايف أند هي إز فرستريتد بيكوز شي وينت أواي. زعلان إن هي مشيت وبعدت وبيكوز أوف هير أنفيثفولنس وعدم أمانتها في العلاقة اللي ما بينهم. Oh, he is a jealous husband. This is how much God loves us. He treats us as a jealous husband. When we go away, he becomes jealous. He wants us back to him. A frustrated shepherd, a ferocious lion, he will go and defend his wife whatsoever. And this is what happens with us. All what we need to do is just to ask him. Just show the intention and the desire that we want to be with him in an intimate relationship and he will defend us however he is also a forgiving husband all what he wants us to do is just god we want you he will forgive he will forget and he will defend us throughout he is a healing physician he is a resuscit- uh, resuscitating reigns he is a loving parent he is a protecting lion a life giving dew a fertile pine tree so he uses a figurative language throughout a lot He also talks about the unfaithful wife. He talks, he, he, he likens her to disappearing morning mist, hot oven, silly dove, a faulty bow, a wild donkey that just goes and, you know, create, you know, start a relationship with anyone, any kind of idol. Okay, I'm, I'm all yours. A wild donkey, a withered plant, a washing away of debris. So again, the, the main theological theme is how God depicted to us his relationship to his people. This covenant between God and us, back in the Old Testament between him and his people, but now it is between God and us, it's like a marriage. And this is actually the same uh, analogy that was used in the New Testament by St. Paul when he says that the church is the bride Of Christ. So that was very, very old. God depicted to us that his relationship with his people is like marriage, the same way it is in the New Test- Testament. However, idol worship pr- breaks the covenant. Nowadays, we don't have idols, don't we? We do, right? Every time we go away and we prefer something over God, that's basically idolatry, which is adultery 
دي نخت ده احنا بنبعد عن ربنا لان هو هي از اور هازبند هي از وي هاف ان انتيميت ريليشن شيب وذ كل ما بنبعد عنه ده ما كما لو كان ان هو عباده اوثان او زنا and the, the most important message here it is the knowledge of god how do we know god our relationship with god is not about books it's not about learning uh, about him it's not uh, uh, a curriculum that we have to learn it is a relationship and he himself said you are destroyed for the lack of knowledge what kind of knowledge not the intellectual it is the intimate knowledge the one on one relationship Glory be to God forever.